गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स एज अ ट्रेडिशन वी स्टार्ट इट ऑन टाइम वी आर थैंकफुल टू ऑल दोज हुव कम हियर टूडे इन स्पाइट ऑफ द हैवी रेन एंड सो एज डॉक्टर पुरोहित यू ऑल्सो गॉट अ लिटल बिट लेट बट ही हैज कॉल्ड सेवरल टाइम्स दैट आई एम ऑन द वे एंड आई एम रीचिंग एंड इज काइंड ऑफ हियर giving him a breathing space but i'll let me introduce him his dr rajan purohit he is a renowned technopreneur and academic leader he currently serving as chairman and managing director of uh, uh, kishiba consulting services founded in 2023 uh, he has been partnering with global platforms like open learning cloud labs to deliver cutting edge uh, technical solutions before his venture into entrepreneurship uh, he spent over 13 years uh, in higher education uh, Sir. in higher education rising from a lecturer to deputy pro vice chancellor at ganpat university gujarat and he has in expertise in digital technology university management uh, in, and these are his areas erp is one of his forte uh, he is an advisory board on uh, global uh, ar vr associations of ahmedabad chapter uh, so just to give you a brief as uh, ahmedabad management association uh, we have started this uh, nep series for higher education Uh, last month we had our first session last month this is our second open forum we also had an mdp uh, yeah. this month so higher education is in need of uh, certain guidelines certain advices certain implementation techniques related to nep and particularly for the ai which is now the buzzword and the challenging word both for the industries uh, across the globe so that is what his forte is so he is going to share his uh, uh, insights on the topic called bridging the gap harnessing technology technology and ai for nep 2020 and ugc recommendations in university this is something very good which uh, i personally liked it when he was here to uh, meet me before the event uh, we discussed and finalized the date so this university guidelines are very important how the future of uh, indian uh, uh, education system will be or it can be what are the career opportunities for current at uh, situation with the students and the future situation everything is very uh, informative with his uh, uh, experience and research done so i'm not uh, taking much of your time we are already uh, running at 6:35 welcome to you dr rajan purohit and over to you thank you very much namaskar everyone sorry i got little late there was a one truck which was halted on sg highway so i had to actually at one point of time i had to become like a michael schumacher <laughs> so that i can reach here so i would just request uh, you advise me what uh, should be the uh, good language i am okay with uh, hindi english and gujarati so yeah i'll start so uh, yeah this is the session sir has already uh, thank you very much dikshit sir uh, Uh, we had a good interaction in that uh, this session is basically uh, you know product of our discussion a lengthy discussion i'll be when i'll be sharing this session there will be some of the products uh, which we are partner of so uh, let us first understand today's topic is this bridging the gap harnessing technology and ai for nep 2020 so how can i have actually you know uh parted this title into three parts the first one is before we actually understand or before we discuss that how can we uh, harness uh, technology or ai we need to understand what is nep 2020 what are other ugc guidelines and what are the gaps that we are trying to basically bridge so this session i'll be uh, taking until 7:45 i guess so we will have a little lengthy discussion wherein primary main focus would be on to summarizing the nep 2020 and other ugc guidelines or UG, ugc recommendation and then i'll be also sharing with you some of the technologies like uh, some of the tools which we have been able to actually work on using artificial intelligence and how that can help so first we will be discussing about nep 2020 then we will talk about the which are the problem areas which are the gaps and then harnessing the technologies so uh, you know uh, i basically is i am from management kalo sir so when we are talking about you know some problem many people are talking that nep has lot of avenues and provisions which 
wherein very few universities are having a clear vision that how they would like to actually align that. So we usually say that when you have got a problem, try to solve it by PPS. PPS is nothing but orient your people and onboard them for that what we want to do. Then address it with the processes and then solve it by the systems. Because I come from the technology, we have been helping organizations to solve their problems using technology with minimum human intervention. This is very important statement if you have read national education policy it is point number 24.5 it says that technology in education is a journey and it's not a destination and capacity will be needed to orchestrate the various ecosystem players to implement the policy objectives so when government has actually crafted this policy there are a lot of things if you go through those you know page number 35 to 65 which majorly talks about higher education we are not going to talk about a school education here because this is focused on universities so many at many parts they have already discussed the opportunities and the possibilities which lies with technology and why should we leverage technology these are key objectives of the NEPs these are summarized versions right NEP is focused on providing universal access to the quality education. That means a person or a student at a last mile should also be benefited by a quality education. So when we are talking about, uh, you know, outreach or delivery or quality, it should be uniform. India will have the highest population of young people in the world over the next decade. That means we are aiming that there will be a lot of, lot of people who are coming into university education. Our ability to provide high quality education opportunities to them will determine the future of our country. And this is very much important which is outlined into NEP. And again, I'm just re-quoting that the objective is to reach out to the person at a last mile. It is becoming increasingly critical that children not only learn but more importantly, learn how to learn. And this is very much important. Why? Because when particularly, uh, you know, a lot of elders and experienced people are sitting here. When you were a student, you had a dearth of information access. If you had to work on something, you had to go to the library. And that was the only, uh, you know, resource. And library may not have all the information. In today's time, a person sitting in Africa or in India or any part of the world, they have an equal level of information access. So they need to be taught that they need to learn how to learn because a lot of things will go on to their self-learning. And nowadays we also understand that the industry is not something like uh, I have completed my graduation or masters or I have done my PhD, then it's done. No, there is nothing. The learning is not, there is no terminal point. So continuously we'll have to learn. Aim for India must be to have an education system by 2040, that is after 16 years from now, that is second to none, with equitable access to the highest quality education for all learners, regardless of social or economic background. So we are trying to hear the government is trying to actually, you know, get everybody on the same board. Now, I'm talking about this, the, those were the major objectives. Now I'll be talking about the higher education. These are the major problems the, of the current higher education system. Fragmented ecosystem leading to inefficiency. Cognitive skills are lacking. That actually did, leads to the poor learning outcomes. Rigid discipline separation. So many institutions are just narrowing down onto a specialization while NEP is talking about a multidisciplinary. Limited socioeconomic access that leads to inequity, limited autonomy that restricts innovation, merit-based career issues that leads to stagnation, research emphasis lacking that leads to limited advancement, suboptimal governance that leads to a poor management that leads to a poor student services, ineffective regulation leading to low quality and large affiliating universities leads to a low standards. We also understand that there are universities which have a lot of colleges which are affiliating to them. But when we actually see to the quality level, we'll have the uh, different results. 
these are the key changes which are such a suggested into this national education policy that all the higher education institutions must be multidisciplinary multidisciplinary uh, undergraduate education should cover the holistic and diverse learning faculty and institutional autonomy have to be there so that there can be there can percolate an innovation revamped curriculum and pedagogy yes because now the uh, you know uh, the students who are coming to the classroom uh, there has been a complete behavioral shift so aligning with that is very much important merit based appointments when we are talking about higher education leaders or faculty members or staff national research foundation to promote research and provide grants and qualified independent governance boards because this talks about giving an autonomy to the board of governors when board of governors are deciding something they will have all they will not have any external in interference and light but tight regulation which is very much needed and increased access access and equity which can be achieved by online and odl highest recommendation of this policy is moving to a large multi multidisciplinary universities and hei clusters by 2030 all hei is to be multidisciplinary or if any institution is just providing a uh, courses or programs which are into a niche area or highly specialized they'll be a part of a cluster and this is the very you would have gone through this this is the structure of the higher education which talks about in the nep there'll be only two types of entities one will be the universities the other one will be the colleges in universities also there will be a research in intensive university and then teaching intensive university they can have an interplay it is not just ke aaj aapne research intensive university ho to after 10 years 15 years you cannot become a teaching intensive it is allowed in colleges also there will be autonomous degree granting colleges which will mainly be focusing on to providing undergraduate education and there will be constituent colleges of the university so there is no affiliating univers uh, affiliating college as such and these autonomous colleges degree awarding colleges they will always have an opportunity to transition into either a teaching intensive university or a research university so this is in nutshell this is a bird's eye view of the structure now this is very much interesting if you go through that now currently we have like uh, nep was uh, released in 2020 the gross enrollment ratio was little lesser than what we are seeing here so there he there is an uh, ambitious target that india wants to enhance its gross enrollment ratio to 50% by 2035 now 2035 is just 11 years from now right <coughs> currently we have 28.4% which is by uh, and this is the data of aishe if you see this data and this data has not been updated after 2021 so very soon like once another new survey has been done we will have the new data but by this you see i have written currently there are 1285 universities so six universities have been added since june this year colleges 50590 1300 new colleges have been added by june from june and 330 stand alone institutions have been added so just to reach to those ambitious ger target government has been increasing the higher education access also this is the number of enrollment if we see at the rate of like 28.4% ger currently there are 4.32 crore students who are enrolled into higher education now government is saying that we want to achieve 50% by 2035 so what will it be it will be additional 3.29 crores this will be an additional seats we are talking about and this is as on today these seats again creating a seats may not help us to actually reach to those ger because currently we we, we know that what is uh, the scenario of the supply and demand it may be possible it may be possible 
not just by increasing the capacity but by tactfully and strategically defragmenting the capacity development government will achieve is trying to achieve to this gr by developing new institutions plus capacity creation by consolidating substantially expanding and improving hgis and see ek simple si ek uh, hum agar situation dekhe to there are institute of national importance in india if you are increasing the seats of at the in institute of national importance is there will certainly be the enrollment into this institutions but then there are tier 1 institution tier 3 into two institution tier 3 institutions now if you are increasing the seats at tier 3 institutions we will have to make sure that if we have expanded our seats by 25% do we have 25% additional admissions into these universities or these institutions that calls for a lot of uh, you know strategic alignment and that's where government has been also if you refer to the statement of the current chairman of the ugc last month he has been also encouraging institutions who are eligible to offer their programs into odl or online one because that will be that will give them the opportunities to enhance the ger and to reach out to lot of people it is also talking about capacity development at the university level see why am i discussing this is once we will discuss all this summarize part we will have one picture about which are the challenges and then we will be aligning uh, we will be discussing about the technology to address those challenges so academic institutions will be mentored to develop these capacities academic and curricular matters teaching and uh, assessment governance reforms financial robustness and administrative efficiency which will actually lead to a better efficiency and student success now when we are talking about a holistic and multidisciplinary education multidisciplinary is not something like an engineering student is studying engineering management student is studying management computer student is studying uh, computers it may be a multidisciplinary it may be the programs in multiple disciplines but here what nep is talking about a student in engineering he understand he takes one course or some more course from management discipline he may take some courses from humanities he may take some courses from arts that's how it is a multidisciplinary not like we are a university or hamara engineering mein bhi hum provide karte hain management mein bhi karte hain computer mein bhi karte hain that's why we are a multidisciplinary uh, we provide a multidisciplinary education no that may not be an accurate statement so when we are talking about a holistic and multidisciplinary education these are the six elements which have uh, been uh, focused in nep they must develop intellectual capacity aesthetic social physical emotional and moral values now this have been given flexibility multiple entry and multiple exit option have already been given starting from level 4.5 to level 8 which leads to phd now after every one year or after every two semester a student or learner has an opportunity to actually exit but do we have an opportunity like inter university mobility राइट right. एक स्टूडेंट है उसने अगर एक बी कॉम एक जगह से किया है एंड ही हैज कंप्लीटेड फर्स्ट ईयर ऑफ द बी कॉम नाउ ही वॉन्ट्स टू गो टू अनदर यूनिवर्सिटी सो दर यूनिवर्सिटी मोबिलिटी हैज टू बी स्ट्रीम लाइन सो गवर्नमेंट हैज ट्राइड वेरी नाइसली इफ यू सी गवर्नमेंट हैज ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड अ डिजिटल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर टू कैटर टू दिस बिकॉज नाउ as we have banks for our money we have a bank for our academic credits also so students can create their id it will be a unique id for as long as they become the student and they can actually accumulate the credits and when they go to another institute that institute will have to simply get that credit map that credit into their programs so i'm sure that every one of you knows about this it also talks about the learning outcomes which are the what are the learning outcomes and these are the specific to disciplinary areas and this you may not find in national education policy 
but the uh, you know one more document which actually came out as a part of national education policy is a national higher education uh, qualification framework if you go to that it has very elaborately talked about this that that will be a domain specific skills and there will be general skills so the students must have to have a comprehensive knowledge and coherent understanding about the discipline they are uh, studying in they must have practical professional and procedural knowledge required for carrying out professional or highly skilled work task related to the chosen field skills in the areas related to specialization in the chosen discipline and capacity to extrapolate from what has been learned translate concepts into real life situations and apply acquired competencies in new or unfamiliar context now this has been on paper to some at some universities but now it is a time that it is translated into actual reality and these are the learning outcomes which are generic learning outcome so for each of the course for an example we have one course like management information systems at an postgraduate level so now this course must have a discipline must address must align with the discipline specific objectives and these generic learning outcomes it also talks about introducing a credit based courses and projects which are not specifically academics in nature it talks about community engagement and services environment education value based education indian knowledge system and global citizenship education you will be surprised that as far as the environment education is concerned in 1991 there was you know that pil was filed by mr mc mehta in supreme court and there after so many hearing and orders it was decided that every university will provide a compulsory full credit course in environment education at undergraduate level but ugc itself has been telling that not all universities have complied with that and we can understand the problem also it is not that there may not be a problem at the level of an intention but some of the universities are not able to find required resources or required faculty members or the environment to offer that and it may be little bit difficult for the university to actually you know physically schedule the course a full course we are talking about a full course which is a four credit course which is ask for 60 hours of engagement full in a semester so there are some operational challenges and hence ugc has given lot of guidelines they have given a model frameworks also model curriculum structure also for courses in if you know now they have launched this life skills 2.0 and that addresses to the to this value based education they have also given the model curriculum structure for the environmental education they have also given some guidelines for the indian knowledge system also but the problem is how to translate this into the core academic structure and deliver now curriculum whenever we are designing must be interesting relevant updated regularly regularly and align with the latest knowledge requirements to meet specified learning outcomes you will be surprised to note that there are lot of other you know there are many universities or institutions who are providing education into computer application but their curriculum is not updated since last 6 7 years they have been teaching the same thing so can you agree that this students will have the skills which is in alignment with the industry no they will not have assessment methods must be scientific designed to continuously improve learning and test the application of the knowledge hei shall also move away from high stakes examination towards more continuous and comprehensive evaluation and this is nothing new many universities outside india they have been doing this there is no end semester examination it is only a continuous evaluation for each subject so the faculty has the flexibility and the freedom to decide that what i will be teaching to my students and what kind of assessment structure i'll keep it may be the based on quiz assessment discussions problem solving it can be anything 
right? But not necessarily. So it has been uh, emphasizing that HEI shall move from this high stakes examination because that, and if we are moving from this high stakes examination, students will have multiple opportunities to perform for their, uh, you know, participation into the subjects and the stress level will also be reduced. Development of capacities that promote student wellness such as fitness, good health, psychosocial well-being and sound ethical grounding are also critical for high quality learning. ODL and online education provides natural path, that's what we have discussed. It also talks about internationalization. Now when we are talking about an internationalization, the government is aiming that India will be promoted as a global study destination providing premium education at affordable cost, thereby helping to restore its role as a Vishwa Guru. And this, this goes back to the universities which were like Nalanda and Takshasilaj and all, where all the scholars from across the part of the world were coming to India and they were studying. But we will have to develop those kind of institutions currently and we will have to actually create those kind of experiences. They have already advised to set up an international student office or the office of international affairs. These all are, have been advised. Then we will be talking about what has been achieved. Mental well-being of the students. In every education institution, there shall be counseling systems for uh, handling stress and emotional adjustments. But here also how technology can help, we will be discussing. These are the... Uh, you know, parameters or these are the uh, factors which the university actually consider to keep their best and motivated faculties with them. They should provide them the basic infrastructure and facilities. Teaching duties also not to be excessive. Student teacher ratio not too high. Freedom to design their own curricular and pedagogical approaches including assessments. Appropriate rewards, promotions, recognitions and movement into institutional leadership. Fast track promotion system for recognizing high impact research and contribution. System of multiple parameters, multi-parametric system for proper performance assessment and create a culture of excellence that will motivate the in and incentivize outstanding and innovative teaching, research, institutional service and community outreach from faculty members to all HEI leaders. And this is very much important to retain a high performing faculty. Steps to be taken by government to implement this, they will earmark a suitable government funds for the education of socio-economically disadvantaged groups. And there has been a lot of focus so that we can reach out to that. Uh, you know, last mile. Enhance gender balance. Set clear targets for the higher education, higher GER, particularly for SD, uh, SEDG. Establish more high quality HEIs in aspirational districts and special education zones containing larger number of SEDGs and enhance the access. This is also very much important. As of now, there are close to 800 plus districts in India. And NEP says that there must be at least one multidisciplinary university institution within that district or near that district. Provide more financial assistance and scholarships to this class, SEDGs, in both public and private higher education institutions and conduct outreach programs for higher education opportunities and scholarships among them. And these are the steps which needs to be taken by HEIs and that's where lot of steps comes, you know, creates lot of challenges and those challenges can be, I cannot say that all the challenges can be addressed by technology overnight, but yes, there can be a very good and defined and reliable pathway. Mitigate opportunity cost and fees for affordable education, more financial assistance, conduct outreach, make admission processes more inclusive, make curriculum more inclusive, increase employability, strictly enforce all no discrimination, provide socio-emotional uh, support, sensitize faculty counselor and student on gender identity issues, develop institutional development plans which is very much important, building and facilities uh, are wheelchair accessible or uh, you know helping the disabled friendly, develop more degree courses taught in Indian language and bilingually. 
this is one of the biggest challenge that universities and institutions have been talking about breach courses for students that come from disadvantaged educational background <coughs> it talks about a teacher education also all teacher education programs must, must be con conducted within composite multidisciplinary university it is not just one specialized niche category all multidisciplinary universities and colleges will aim to establish education department which besides carrying out cutting edge research in various aspects of education will also run bed program this is very much important because over last 20 years you would have seen that many universities or institutions have actually shut down their bed programs or they might have closed their education faculty and they might have moved to the technological faculties teaching <coughs> education teachers education institutions will be required to convert to multidisciplinary in institutions by 2030 and they will also have to work closely with the government and private schools so that they can involve with the society with the community and they can also deal with all those other uh, factors which ugc has given like environmental education iks and all phd program reorientation this is also very much important that all fresh phd student entrants irrespective of discipline will be required to take a credit based course in teaching education pedagogy or writing related to their chosen phd subject during the doctoral training period it was not happening till now people were taking but that was by choice now this is by the policy exposure to pedagogical practices designing curriculum credible evaluation systems communication and so on will be ensured phd students will also have a minimum number of hours of actual teaching experience gathered through teaching assistantship and other means and this was you know you also know that for the part time students uh, phd students this was not happening why government has done this having assumed that most of the people who have completed their phd's are likely to join academic institutions or likely to get associated with academic institutions so that we can leverage their efforts and knowledge for academic structure integration of vocational education yes this has been uh, you know undermined by the society so everybody was talking about a technical and higher education if a student you know people were seeing and that's what has been mentioned into a policy also that people were uh, feeling if somebody is going into a vocational education they were treating them with a you know somebody who has taken an inferior level of education pathway now government has been talking about that by 2025 at least 50% earners learners sorry through school and higher education shall have exposure to vocational education you would have also gone to school at least i i know that when we used to go to school in my 10th we had one vocational unit and we used to call it a udyog right and the school used to teach basically and there were some we took some units which was into a basic electrical fittings so that is a part of uh, vocational education and it it makes when government is talking about uh, developing holistic skills it makes a sense because you would also have noticed in your surrounding or your, in your neighborhood or in your home that nowadays young people they don't know the basic skills of quick fixes they cannot set up one water tap they cannot fix one you know wiring problem electrical problem they'll simply call somebody and wo aayega and then it will be done numbers of students in vocational education will be considered in ger this is also very much important when we talk about that 3 crores and 42 lakh students new seats to be added this vocational enrollments will also be considered into that hei is allowed to conduct short term certificate courses in various skills including soft skills and others exploring with odl online and digital this uh, distance learning mode national committee has been set up for integration of vocational education the credit based framework will also facilitate mobility across general and vocational education this was not there now it will be there and this is one of the also challenge or an operational challenge and academic challenge for the institutions higher education now there there had been lot of other bodies 
and just to decentralize the power government has recommended in this national education policy that there will be a higher education commission of india which will have four important verticals one would be taking care of and overseeing the regulatory aspects by the name of national higher education regulatory council the another one would be a national accreditation council nac which will replace nec higher education grants council which will talk about hegc which will only be focused on to the grants and there will be a general education council which will be focusing on to preparing curriculum and modalities and everything so all these four verticals will be the part of hci but they'll work in with independence but under the uh, one umbrella then these are other councils as of now we know there is a indian council for icar there is a vci nct then council of architecture ncvt and all those right now their role has been transferred or it has been transitioned into a professional standard setting bodies so they will be just a recommendatory bodies that if you want to teach a bachelor of architecture this is the model curriculum and they will work in coordination with this general education council all education institutions will be held in similar standards of audit and disclosure for a not for profit entity that we know surplus is to be invested into education sector transparent transparent public uh, disclosures and uh, ugc has been giving this uh, circulars to all the institutions that you proactively disclose all the informations on your website common national guidelines for all legislative acts that will form private hcis and which will cover good governance financial stability educational outcomes and transparency private hcis having philanthropic and public spirited intent will be encouraged through a progressive regime of fees determination as of now we know that many states in gujarat there is Uh, a body called a fee regulation committee now this fee regulation committee ba basically determines the fees for the higher education institutions and the schools by very deeply examining their financials and other factors these institutions going forward will have this fee determination flexibilities also effective governance and leadership yes we talked about like bog board of governors will be given will be the apex body and they will make all the appointments including the head of the institutions and take all the decisions regarding their governance the board of governance shall be responsible and accountable to the stakeholders through transparent and self disclosure of all relevant records so this is the accountability which has been set up bog responsible for meeting all regulatory guidelines which are established by national higher education regulation council now these are we just spoke about a summarized version about part 2 of national education policy this is the part 3 which talks about other key areas it talks about a professional education so as of now they <coughs> uh the national education policy has not you know deeply touched upon these areas these are edu agricultural education legal education healthcare education and technical education so there will be an amalgamation there will be a, a convergence of multidiscipline into all this this is also very much important as of now private universities have not been advised in the policy but all public universities have been advised that you will set up an adult education center this will help the country to actually enhance the overall literacy rate in the country so if there is a university which is surrounded by 50 villages they will set up an adult education center and then they will promote it very very aggressively and bring those adult uh, fellow citizens to that center or they will create some materials which are recorded videos which are uh, which can be a mobile application which can be a website and then they'll be through the offices of a sarpanch or some other leading people from those areas just take this example as a for a better understanding there may be like people in the cities also right who have migrated to cities and they would like to learn something new we have particularly 
two years before i'll tell you i had uh, three years ago i had i was discussing with a very senior person who is into a law profession and uh, he also spoke about that we want to learn new age technology and how it can help us in our profession so can you imagine now a person who is into a very very senior role very reputed and uh, very regarded very respectful profession they are also finding some gap because the world is moving with the technology promotion of indian languages arts and culture there is a three language formula to promote multilingualism accurate inclusion of traditional indian knowledge into the curriculum more hies to use the mother tongue local tongue uh, local language as a medium of instruction and establishment of indian institute of translation and interpretation sanskrit will be mainstreamed with strong offering in schools and higher education technology and crowdsourcing will play a crucial role in these efforts and teaching in the home or local language wherever it is possible now how the policy is talking about using a technology it very clearly mentions about integrating a technology because without in the absence of technology most of the things cannot be achieved so the <coughs> government has set up a national educational technology forum which is actually advising the central and state agencies on the tech based uh, products or they are intervening onto those solutions they build intellectual and institutional capacities in education technologies envision strategic thrust areas into the domain articulate new directions for research and innovation HEIs will play an active role not only in researching but also offering online courses in cutting edge domains and assessing their impact on specific areas such as professional education i'll give you one example there are a lot of technological universities and as you are aware that currently nowadays in school education also in grade 6 or 7 also students are taught programming language like python there are technological universities we are very good on that now some of the schools they might not have the teachers who are very good in teaching the python language because if he or she is very good they may have the opportunity to get into the industry or they may have the opportunity to get into the higher education sector so their preferences may be changed so now how about these kids who are who have been given the syllabus so using the technology these technological universities can actually design course particularly onto a python development focusing onto the applied programming skills and then they can actually provide it to all the school kids that's how uniform learning experience can be created institutions will have the autonomy to approve institutional and non institutional partners to deliver such training which will be integrated with skills and higher education frameworks universities will aim to offer phd and master programs in core areas such as machine learning as well as multidisciplinary field imagine a phd program offered in ai plus healthcare ai plus marketing ai plus organization behavior and that's how it will be blended hais may blend online courses with traditional teaching as ugc you know that ugc has already you know by that regulation of swayam ugc already gives the flexibility to the institutions that 40% up to 40% of your credits can be earned by online program as of now it is through swayam portal but if my understanding it is my personal understanding that when a university has been given an authorization to provide the courses into an offline in person mode they can very well be uh, you know empowered or authorized to provide the courses into an online mode and their credit can be also uh, mobilized for their students benefits <coughs> now it also talks about that if you want to go for an online and digital education what will be required there has to be a pilot studies for online education so take some problem statements or some courses prepare your online education mechanism and frameworks and then see and then evaluate that what is the effect digital infrastructure is very much important online teaching platforms and tools is very very much important because we are talking about 
you know user experience and nowadays as we all know that the students have a lesser attention time and thanks to those shorts and everything you know it is just a one thumbs away and things are changed so we will have to as the universities or the institutions when we are talking about online or uh, online mode of education we'll have to make sure that they find it engaging and they are completely immersed into that learning make admission process more inclusive content creation in digital repository and dissemination addressing the digital divide how can we actually make sure that the people at the last mile there where there is no connectivity there are no devices they can also access, access these online uh, courses there must be a virtual labs because this national education policy is talking about immersive experiences right so there must be virtual lab. virtual lab is very much simple why virtual lab because in the age of digital <coughs> digital time anything can be uh, transitioned into a digital twin and when we convert that into a digital twin we can definitely make it accessible to a large group of people training and incentivize the teachers training is very much important because it has been also seen that the person who is very very effective in teaching in an offline or in person environment may not be as effective in an online environment so it is very very much important so that's why orientation and onboarding of a people with a right training is also very much important online assessment and examinations is possible nowadays a lot of solutions are there for the proctored examination and continuous e evaluation is already there blended models of learning to be introduced part of the curriculum is offline part of the curriculum is self part of the curriculum is online laying down the standards nothing to be compromised with the quality creating a dedicated unit for building of world class digital infrastructure educational digital content and capacity and this will require a conscious investment of time and money by the higher education institutions many of the institutions have been because i have been meeting uh, you know the honorable vice chancellors and the leadership team at uh, various universities and i hear that oh we have integrated an online learning into our curriculum and when i debrief they tell me that we have taken some solutions from coursera or from edx or some other uh, those kind of content providers now we need to understand that is it actually addressing what is required for the students it may be possible ki your course is talking about some elements or some sub units for those 60 hours of learning and when student is actually taking that course at a coursera or edx it may not be matching so there may be a forceful integration it is also possible with swayam swayam plus nptl nptl plus and e patshala also when we talk about you know 100% matching curriculum there is not uh, no availability so that is the reason that each individual institution or a group of institutions who are sharing the same curriculum they will have to invest into this kind of infrastructure and they will have to actually uh, you know provide this another benefit is also if i am teaching my student in the classroom if my students are seeing me also into online mode or uh, in, into a digital program there are chances of having a greater bonding wherein the students will come to me i'll be able to help their uh, solve their doubts but in simply a forceful integration that cannot be possible key long term thrust areas for financing to cultivate the education is universal provisioning for quality early childhood care this is very much important we'll just uh, skip little bit extensive use of technology and online education is one of the major thrust area which has been defined listed into national education policy what are the implementation principle ultimately what we are talking about we are just talking about how to fully implement national education policies and which are the avenues using which we can implement it so <coughs> the implementation principle says that it has to be implement the implementation of the spirit and intent of the policy will be the most critical matter not just for the sake of saying that okay NEP is saying that provide online education and we have forcefully map something look at the actual outcome that what student is actually going to get and 
<coughs> what part of national education policy other parts it is actually mapping implement in a phased manner each policy point has several steps so one step depends on another so it is a step by step by step we cannot just jump off ki point number 1 se we have reached to a point number 5 prioritization will be important in ensuring optimal sequencing of the policy points most critical points are taken first so this policy says that as a institution you outline your 10 15 points and then you sort it out that which are the most critical point and then try to address it first only a comprehensive and full fledged implementation not in piecemeal <coughs> otherwise you will be just cheating yourself need careful planning joint monitoring and collaborative implementation between centers and states and timely infusion of requisite resources human infrastructure and financial at the center and state level is very much uh, required careful analysis and review of the linkages between multiple parallel implementation step now this policy is going to be very deeply and very <coughs> you know mindfully going to be reviewed in the year 2040 so after 15 years because 15 years is the time where all universities will have to you know that higher education structure that we just saw the entire higher education structure of india must be aligned with national education policy and jis jis institutes ko institutes ko transition karna hai they would have already completed their transition within 15 years now these are the challenges or implementation it talks about uniform learning experience to all the students it talks about must be a high quality <coughs> multiple entry and exit system this is when we talk about a critical area i understand that for many institution this will be the first point that how do we align or implement multiple entry and exit system and this in multiple entry exit system there is also one more important point when students are storing their credits into academic bank of credit that is going to re retain that credits only for 7 years <coughs> after 7 years the student will have to start again <coughs> experiential learning how do we take them if we are talking about uh, if we are teaching uh, an automobile engineering students about how engines work how do we actually make them immerse into that critical thinking and problem solving skills is the most important skill that the policy is talking about apart from humanities or value education and others multidisciplinary approach in real spirit i would just reiterate that providing programs into different disciplines is not multidisciplinary but giving an access of multidiscipline <coughs> or the courses from multidiscipline to the student is actually a multidisciplinary approach cbcs credit based choice system right and many universities and institutions have this on paper but we need to address that rather the students are having this into a practice formative assessment this is what like you know faculty members are given the flexibilities to decide what kind of assessment will be there for their courses it is not necessary that there will be an examination at the end of the semester enhance enrollment to meet ger targets we have already spoken internationalization <coughs> credit transfers and how we can keep the international students engaged so that we can have more and more international students coming in handling stress and emotional adjustments we have been seeing particularly you know students have been facing a lot of stress and depression how do we handle that UGC has been giving uh, some advices and guidelines that you have the counselor you have the people who can help but how can we use technology because you also know that people would like to discuss these things being alone rather than somebody else <coughs> multi parametric approach for performance appraisal everything for an example if we have to somebody will have to very very uh, simple example if somebody will have to apply for the permanent residency of another country say for a canada then can they go and give anything in description no they'll have to actually apply following that point based system and whatever they have attained that will accrue them certain points and if their points are meeting into that total criteria then they will have the chances to get into 
expansion yes because we'll have to meet the high ger we'll have to talk about the expansion content and delivery in local languages how many local languages can we integrate greater focus on arts and humanities idp as a vision document for 15 years institutional development plan many universities have never prepared their even 5 years vision document but this is now talking about prepare your institutional development plan and then because every university or institution will have different challenges they will be operating into a different environment so not one institutional development plan cannot fit all fee determination framework we spoke about empowered bog we spoke about three language formula for multilinguality and adult education center now how can we harness the technology i'll give you <coughs> one example let us see we are talking about technology and artificial intelligence let me just put this down there can you see this is one of the tools with which we have been helping institutions basically to create the courses <coughs> we have 15 minutes of time so i'll give you one demo that and this will help when we are talking about creating the curriculum which are addressing critical thinking which are also helping students to develop a problem solving skills <coughs> how can we how can we design the curriculum using the technology so i would just request if somebody can give me a name of a course of your choice right if we have a defined uh, units or the modules we can simply insert here or we can just keep it blank who are the audience anything else upgradation of any b sir can i just come back to you because after completing this yes audience would be undergraduate or postgraduate students and what kind of course we would like to have this because nep also says that you instill most Uh, aspects of discussions into your curriculum so we can keep it interactive or we can keep it forum based interactive can be there now these are the tones can you see this what tone do we want to keep it academic authoritative challenging conversational critical dramatic encouraging engaging and these all have been listed here for the faculty members to choose and these are based on the analysis what is prevailing at a global level so as of now we can keep it professional yeah participate kya gaya we don't have that but we can keep it encouraging engaging critical experiential learning that should we keep exploratory okay right now let's go ahead with this and which language so we can simply write here indian english and what should be the duration i just keep as a full credit full course for hours a uh, week for 15 weeks probably this will address to the semester requirement now this will ask us that whether you want the system to generate the course objective or you want you have your own course objectives so we can write here if we have any course objective we simply can paste it here or we can 
generate based on this what is the description then we can simply write because you know ready made nahi aayega thoda to hame yahan se usko prompt dena padega this is what i want right students must be able to apply consumer behavior in real life is this okay submit and then this will generate the objective it has generated the descriptive objective and then we can just keep it and we go to next now this is asking us okay course outcomes <coughs> based on which frameworks or models would you like to create <coughs> it can be all all round course learning outcome or bloom's taxonomy bloom's taxonomy has been widely popular <coughs> project based learning social and emotional learning <coughs> solo taxonomy or soft skills <coughs> we can add our own also should we go with the blooms solo Do you want to select any else? Okay. We can also give a description here. Now these are the learning outcomes it has created. So these are the phrased learning outcomes, and these are the descriptions. And we can also, <coughs> if needed, we can add our own also. It is not just that. यहाँ पर उन्होंने जो create किया है, we just accept. अगर ये नहीं लेना है, तो we can uncheck. And we can keep for just now. We just keep it, and we can add it from here, as I said. we go to next and then what should be like what should be the course structure so should we go with the competency based or a subject centered yeah. and we can also uh, tell it that how many number of units it should generate or we just simply keep it blank it will apply its own brain so this is digging deep the more we go to the page level information it will take some more time by the time it uh, generates i would uh, like to show you one more possibility because it will take some time to prepare that entire course structure because we have asked it to prepare the structure for 60 hours uh, you uh, you know now this policy has been saying that there has to be an uniform experiential learning for the students this is one of the possibilities let me just go here you know when we at least we were in schools we had the those microscopes and in gujarati kya koi pattu hoy athwa to dungli ni chhal hoy ene microscope ni upar muki ane pachi we used to see that it was more like fascinating out of curiosity ke kevu dekhay chhe we can actually zoom into that but actual when we are talking about an actual learning nowadays you would also agree that not all schools have the resources which are like digital microscopes or who will have all the slices they may have the onion peel they may have some leaf but baki bada nu shu right when we are teaching students in anatomy or hematology or pathology or vet science or dentistry how do we get that how do we give that kind of uniform 
access to the student so this is i would like to just share with you this is an initiative by the university of new south wales and university of queensland in australia it is a not for profit initiative and this is they have been developing since last 10 years what they have done is they have digitized all slices there are more than 22000 images which you can search and you can teach to the students another problem is when i am looking at a microscope when you are looking at a microscope the same slice the structure will be different so our question will be different to the uh, teacher but with this all the students will have the same structure the faculty member will ask them you can see here this is an annotated uh, you know part the faculty member will tell them ki aap mujhe is is cheez ko identify karke batao and then students will be able to annotate onto this slice onto these images and the faculty member would be able to basically uh, assess and the best part is all the things you can see here this is the part of a heart all the things can be zoomed in up to 40x or 100x and this is accessible to the students in their own devices they need one device and an internet connection i am just showing you the potential and the possibility when we are talking about an access of uniform learning and immersive learning this is this may not be purely an immersive but yes student can be very much focused on to this because they will see lot of thing see if i search here it will give me all the structures of heart look at this and if i take this i can go into this i can annotate my faculty can also annotate and that can help me i can go up to that let's go back to course magic yes see it has created the modules introduction to cognitive science cognitive biases and heuristics consumer decision making process memory and consumer behavior cognitive theories and marketing strategies perception and consumer preferences marketing strategies and cognitive science cognitive load and decision making ethical implications in marketing and innovative mar marketing campaigns we can either keep this or we can also add a module here now what it has done we are also like industry is also working i am not saying that we are just working but if you can see it has aligned each module with the outcomes which it generated so those who have participated into a nag they would be aware that many faculty members have been doing that copo mapping you know course outcome and program outcome mapping that has been a very time consuming exercise and industry is coming up with the solutions there will be that you can design your courses and automatic alignment including assessment will be done we just keep this and then we come to this module content now for module content we have different different models here we have one model which talks about you know problem based learning because we uh, you know just saw that there was a critical thinking and problem solving skills are part of national education policy so i can keep this or you please suggest me is that okay project based or problem based so let me keep it here and now this will generate the another uh, possibilities which is coming by the time it generates we would like to just discuss that days are not far that we will have the devices which will be the overhead on ear or you know like the spectacles you would have already seen ke tere hal android phone or iphones real time translation is possible so when we are talking about government has also been talking about translating academic and textbooks into a multilingual it may be in gujarati kannada jitni bhi languages hai bharat ni ye badani andar e logo ne translate karwana hai 
but what will happen to the new knowledge which is coming in and coming in and coming in and which is primarily focused on to an international language then there will be the device based assistance to the students for implementing this part that you just simply you are into the classroom you wear your spectacles and pick any of the books and you can read it in the language that you are actually desiring to do so many universities have already started uh, establishing their labs for artificial you know augmented reality and virtual reality and now it is becoming mainstream many industries are also have started adapting ar vr based designing processes so <coughs> students will always have that possibilities see this it has created now can you see the difference when it is talking about when uh, it has generated the first module it is focused on activity but here it is focused on content with activity and accordingly we can just keep it and now it can create the page we are going little fast but if you would like to have a detailed like demo or we can connect later on and we can see this i am just giving you what is possible using an artificial intelligence this is nothing on the back end it is a generative artificial intelligence models you know this is also i'll show you this is another model and it works on indian languages very well right i want to create a course structure for my mba students on consumer behavior it must it must be in gujarati language this is possible <coughs> i am just showing you what is possible as of now we have still not yet reached to the artificial general intelligence we are still at a level of artificial intelligence when we will reach to an agi level it will be similar to what humans can do except those uh, like there are two aspects people are talking about some bad sides also some people are talking about very positive and potential sides also but the fact is we may agree with the evolution and the possibilities of ai and other technologies or we may not agree but we can not simply ignore it and that is the world that we are living in so <coughs> this is possible like the more and more you go into deep dive it is possible to write even a full book right this is possible another thing when we are talking about uh, uh, you know providing an online education and there was a point i'll be very quick there was a point that institutions are required to invest into creating their digital infrastructure to provide their online education also now it may be <coughs> very much difficult for many institutions if they go and design and develop everything from scratch rather there are tools available one of the tools is like as dikshit sir in the beginning he informed there is one of the tools is like open learning now this open learning is a tool like what it is a platform like a gmail જેવી રીતે આપણે જીમેલ કોમ્યુનિકેશન માટે યુઝ કરીએ છીએ ધીસ ઇઝ ધ ટૂલ વી કેન યુઝ ટુ ટેક આર યુનિવર્સિટી ઓર ઇન્સ્ટિટ્યુશન ઓનલાઈન ઇટ ડઝન્ટ પ્રોવાઈડ કોન્ટેન્ટ કોન્ટેન્ટ હેઝ ટુ બી ઓફ ધ યુનિવર્સિટી એન્ડ દેટ ઇઝ હાઉ ઇટ ઇઝ અલાઇનિંગ વિથ ધી નેશનલ એજ્યુકેશન પોલિસી ઓલ્સો અનધર બેનિફિટ ઇઝ વેન યુજીસી ઇઝ સેઈંગ કે યુ પ્રોવાઈડ એન્વાયરમેન્ટલ એજ્યુકેશન ટુ ઓલ યોર અંડર ગ્રેજ્યુએટ સ્ટુડન્ટ્સ it can be very well possible that you take some good portal you get to get some good platform you design one good course full four credit course make it self paced course online and then 
give it to all your students if you have 100 or 500 students it can be possible for an uh, in person or uh, offline sessions but imagine the universities for an example gtu considering their affiliating structure they would have somewhere around 250000 students be adi lag jetla thi ena thi vadhare students hase in in their undergrad so how can it be possible that all those students in their uh, life cycle at gtu at least once take this program right so these things are possible with the technology see this has already created एक एक छे आई विल टेक दिस हाँ की कंसेप्ट बिकॉज दिस विल जनरेट अ मोर इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्टेंट वी वो ऑल्सो वर्कड ऑन क्रिएटिंग सम दैट कॉन्टेंट फॉर द पाइथन प्रोग्रामिंग फॉर किड्स ऑल्सो एंड द लैंग्वेज इट हेज यूज यूल बी अमेज देन वी हेव ऑल्सो क्रिएटेड वन मॉड्यूल्स ऑन कौटिलियाज अर्थशास्त्र to actually align it with the to the students who are learning modern economics we are still in the stage of evolution of technology and when we are talking about the multiple entry and multiple exit systems it is very well possible by introducing you know aligning all the as i said in the beginning that if you are facing a problem we try to solve it by that pps approach orient and onboard people define the processes and solve by the system right now the system is technological system and when everything is a process driven there won't be any sort of a deficiency if you are getting a deficiency you tweak the process and deficiency is solved look at this sir it has been creating this still not finished it will create all these things yes, it will come there will be very small case study to just give a gist to the students this is how it will <coughs> create some short short case studies which will basically give the scenarios to the students to actually think over and then to participate see this is integrated in a way that students are engaged you know they will have to just like you know a textbook che any jem apne we are taking the content when they are learning online they will have to actually share their experiences share their thoughts and everything that's why that's how they'll be engaged and we were also discussing with one of the universities ke they are preparing and they have prepared some content e loko ek course che ena 10 10 minute na videos banaya che then we discussed that currently 10 minutes is a very long time what students will do video chalu kari and then they can have their mobile <coughs> so the best would be minimum 3 minutes maximum go for to 4 and 1/2 minutes itla na nana nana modules tame banavine muko and then you ask a quiz or ask the students that what have you learned what is your experience and something so that the students will be engaged into that entire learning journey otherwise you know if it is a 10 minutes or 15 minutes long video and if it is an academic video the students may there are high chances that they may just play it and they may be engaged 
so there are high chances that they will have a fragmented focus right so this is there there are some lot of other possibilities and opportunities which are which lies with technologies so with this we call it like supercharge your organization with technology and here are my contact coordinates if you would like to connect we can definitely discuss but we are still into an evolution phase lot of things are evolving lot of great things are coming out lot of immersive experiences are designed across the globe and i can say that the time which is coming is certainly going to be the best time for the students using the technology right thank you everyone thank you for listening to me thank you very much on behalf of ahmedabad management association and the audience present here i would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to dr rajan parohit for taking it out the time and sharing such valuable insights and understanding of the topic that is very apt in our today's time once again sir thank you very much for your thoughtful presentation and the demo and we would like to have this regularly i hope the audience would agree to what i have said thank you very much sir